Hello, world, and hello, my friends in the International Art Alliance. My name is Ross in Los Angeles, and today we have, as usual, our wonderful International Art Alliance, um, what are we called, staff members? <laughs> 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 Ourselves. We have Denise in, in the Montreal area of Canada, and Laura in the United Kingdom, and Stephanie in Toronto, and... Cheryl in Australia. I got to look at another map of Australia and really pin this down exactly where you are. And uh, Rose, are you, where are you today, Rose? Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago. Holy cow, oh. holy cow, how cool. Wow. Right on. Oh, oh I want a walking well, tour. <laughs> I want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. Good for you. Oh, oh boy. Well, we've got, a, we've got a really juicy topic today. Our topic today is what was the worst thing that anyone's ever said about your art? Crushing critiques, um, <laughs> stupid offhand, backhand compliments. Um, I mean, there, <laughs> there's just, I'm sure we all have a, a, a wealth of information to mine here and um, the worst thing that anyone's ever said to me is silence. I was sitting in a class, a big, big drawing class. Do you guys hear some kind of weird sound? No, no. Just me. Okay. <laughs> it's the ringing in my ears. <laughs> um, was complete silence. In this drawing class, I put this drawing up. I had worked really hard in it. It was somehow very personal to me. I couldn't explain what it was at all, but I sure worked hard on it. I had three or four of my best friends in this drawing class. And amongst the great number great of people in this room, now I'm getting echo, um, nobody said a word, not a word. It was devastating. So I'm so interested here if you guys had like a worse comment than silence. <laughs> Because that was the worst comment I ever had. Can I ask you a question, Ross? Yeah. Did you did you like did you say anything or did everyone just no one said anything and you were just kind of like did did, it, did the teacher move on to another student after no one said anything or how did that how did it pan out? That's a good question. So uh, no, I I kind of remember, but he he's so I think I was like the first hey, or the second uh, work to be discussed that day. And so he said, um, so, you know, who's the artist? I raised my hand and he says, so, um, you know, um, what would, what would you tell everybody about the work? And I said, I wouldn't tell them anything about the work. Nobody had anything to say about it at all. And he said, really? I said, yeah, really. <laughs> so I'm like, then we moved on. <laughs> I, I don't think that was a very good art instructor person. No. Oh, really? Something. No. No, you can't let that happen during critique. It's very easy to just sit there and say nothing. You have to elicit something from the students or there's no benefit for the students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's interesting. I mean, even if I had to be personally, Ross, yeah. it happened over and over again. But there was a language issue when I was going to Emily Carr University. A lot of students had been recruited from China, partly because mm -hmm. there was some kind of relationship going on with the faculty and they paid substantially more for their tuition. So they were being highly recruited by the university. Mm. And so that was three quarters of my art class was Korean and Chinese speakers, mm. not English or French speakers in Canada. So they initially they had a language barrier. So we would put our work up and the English language speakers would respond to everybody's work, including me. And then we'd put our work up and the um, foreign students wouldn't say a single word to us. And they were three quarters of the class. Mm. Oh, so boy, the instructor hard. absolutely had to get involved because otherwise our time with three or four hours for a crit for a class and only six people in the class were speaking. Mm. So it turned out to be rather a problem because I had paid for that course and I expected my money back and I was getting nothing. So I experienced the same thing where I would put my work up and it would be absolute complete silence. The only person who had anything to say was the instructor. 
Mm. But at least she weighed in and it wasn't complete silence. Mm. Unlike your instructor <laughs> yeah, he didn't even who kind of let the ball fall. Yeah, he did not weigh in. Yeah, true. There was yeah. no benefit to you as the student. Also huh. no benefit for the other ones because uh, yeah. sometimes uh, you you don't have boards, but if you are pushed to take something out uh, from someone else, uh, you can say something. So yeah. absolutely, Lara. Yeah. There's such benefit in that, and the, and the, we were all lacking it, including Ross. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what, what did you important. get out of it, Ross? So well, what did you get out of that experience? I mean, I really took I mean, it personally. Yeah. You know, it left yeah. me with this. Um, mystery like what was it about either that work or about me or about self-expression or you know I had to go yeah. down this whole list and try and and I already had a whole bunch of you know you guys know me it's like I'm neuroticus so <laughs> you know it like already I already had like the groundwork for like even more stories to fill in the gaps which also is even worse it's, it, it's hard when you expose your art <clears throat> So you, it's like you put yourself naked to yeah. to the public uh, to yeah. be your soul. Nope. So. Nope. But or also the, the fact that it happened people. in art school, I mean, that is the place to learn how to handle negative critiques. And, yeah. and also the place where you learn how to speak about other people's work. Right. Because as an artist, exactly. it's not only important to to be able to handle those negative words, but it's also very important to be able to um, articulate why you do or do not like something. Hmm. And also the yeah. way you should approach that. Because if you- Especially in art school. Yeah. Hmm. It, that's very, yeah. very valuable. And, and there should have been a discussion at least started as to why nobody had anything to say about it and where, yeah that was coming from mm. because yeah, that, not, that should not yeah. have been that should not have been uh, up to you that should not have reflected up you should have not taken that on because that's not yeah. your your it wasn't um, about you it wasn't yeah. about you and so i know it feels work. like it is but yeah cheryl's an art yeah. teacher right so how, what do you think about that cheryl out of curiosity <clears throat> um um, I, I, I find the whole world of art criticism just really, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just so difficult or it's just, I don't often understand what the purpose is. I understand that if you're, well, I used to mark HSC students and we must, marked them against the aims and the objectives of the curriculum. And so we would always have these three things or whatever set and we would ask those questions constantly to be able to put everybody in the state into a sign curve. But it wasn't necessarily marking, it was just really ranking everybody into a sign curve because we had, I don't know, 100,000 students who were doing art. Hmm. So that was one, because, we, because they were actually wanting um, to do the course. Um, I, I see my art school experience more as a period of time, not necessarily much that I really gained from it. I, I remember. Um, <laughs> but what about, I just. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go. Ahead. What about as a teacher? Like, what is your what is your reaction to what Ross said? Being an art teacher yourself. I I just find those sort of situations of putting people into areas where they have to critique critique each other. I don't kind of get it. I don't know why I don't get it because I I I have two ladies who come here in want to learn art from me and they're all into this criticism and criticism and they take it home and everybody criticizes it and everybody has a thought and an opinion which I think that I've probably only developed this later on I'm sort of a little bit more of um, um, um I'm not your customer or I'm not this so I'll move on oh. but that's probably coming from my older self of um, I mean, and then on the other side, I often do think that there are levels of art. Otherwise, everything would be a card that you buy at the supermarket. I mean, right. mm -hmm. if you wanted yeah. to sort of say that. But then again, on the other sort of side of it, I really like some kid art. And I don't know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a minefield. The worst thing that was said to me was how um, something about um, you can't even put your makeup on. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think wow. that was a personal insult. Wow. <laughs> what kind of sorry? Couched as art criticism. Someone said, Lara, someone said to Cheryl, you can't even put your makeup on. So what? how do you expect to become an artist? That's a personal insult. That's not art criticism. <laughs> <at all>. Totally. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That what one's easy answer? to ignore. What was your answer? Yeah. I don't remember sort of saying anything because I was only like 19 or 18 and I probably didn't you even have any smacked. makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the problem. I didn't have makeup on. I, it should have been, for God's sake, you wear some makeup, woman. <laughs> We're a wild child. <laughs> I feel bad now. I almost I just, never wear makeup. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was just, I just sort of thought it was really stupid and ridiculous, but I thought a lot of stuff that art school is ridiculous. They used to have this thing where they used to smoke all the time and drink coffee. And I don't know, they just said a rap to me. See, this is me. Blah, 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 blah. When I blah, 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 blah. And do you see someone else's work? Blah, 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 blah. And I'd be thinking, oh, for God's sake, just shut up. Can I just paint? I don't want to listen to this. <laughs> I love that. Just shut up and let me paint. <laughs> I often, I that often has to be our quiet. slogan. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up and let me paint. I often feel like that now. It's often like when you know, there's too much talk and at Christmas and all those things. And I get sick and tired of blah, 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 and all these different opinions and all these things. And I think, can I just go into my studio? Everyone go. I don't Maybe we should change think. this podcast thing into just a, a, like six squares of people painting. <laughs> <laughs> no talk. <laughs> just be painting. I have to say that my worst um, uh, crit was also school related, art school related. <laughs> but unfortunately, I had gone back to school when I was 49. And um, my instructor was younger than I and also had a studio in the same building as I. And it was a studio practices course. So we had all had to sign up at the beginning of the class and tell him where our studios were because he was supposed to come and visit the studio, check out what we were doing, give us feedback. And then we were supposed to, you know, throughout the course, it was studio practices course. Well, for me, he waited till the last day of the semester to finally come and check out my studio. So of course, I didn't have any opportunity to get his feedback before I had to submit all of my course material. So I kind of thought, I guess he didn't really care because he had postponed a whole bunch of appointments and had kind of made it clear that he was irritated that he had to leave the campus to go to my studio. Even though I knew his studio, his studio was in the same building. <laughs> So I was already kind of like, I'm not sure what's going on here. So this instructor who was had a high profile at the time, I might, might add, who was showing his work everywhere, quite well lauded. He walked into my studio and I had made sure that I had the whole place surrounded. I had pulled out all the work that had been shown in shows that had been curated for the past five years. So each piece had been a curated piece. I something had worked had with a curator. A show? Like something that had been juried into a show or something like that? More than juried, I had been commissioned into some okay. shows mm -hmm. by, a cur by different curators. And I pulled <laughs> that work out to show, as well as what I'd been doing through our course, our class. And he walked in. He was late. He walked in. He looked around. And he said, you can't paint. You can't draw. You have no grasp of anatomy. Why are you doing this? Oh, wow. Ooh. And I have to admit, I mean, at 49 years old, having a 42 year old speak to me that way was, I was taken aback. It was incredibly disrespectful, <laughs> just so. as one person to another. Yeah. Nothing. But as an instructor, to a student who was a mature student who he could see had been doing this for years. It was deeply insulting. 
What a jerk. I took it personally as well. Yeah. Because if it had been that bad, why had the curators um, wanted to work with me? And then why did they hang my work on the walls for their shows if it made them look bad? Because if it was that bad, it would have made the curator look bad. Yep. And they had not done that. So in a sense, he was also insulting every curator that I had worked with for the past five years. And that's where I was able to say, wait a minute, this is not about me. This mm -hmm. guy has a problem. Mm -hmm. He has an, a personal issue with me. And I almost quit school. Oh. As a mature student going back to school, I almost quit. <laughs> Sounds kind of like thanks. jealousy, actually. <laughs> well, at first, honestly, Stephanie, I was so taken aback because, I mean, I'm not the kind of person who would say that kind of thing to anyone, even no, if I no. thought it. So I had to like really assess like where was this coming from, and I I'm very grateful that the uh, at the time the disability coordinator at the university when I went to her and said I'm going to quit this is awful, she said Are you kidding me I've seen your work it's amazing. Yeah. This guy has no idea what he's talking about and it has to be personal. Right. Mm -hmm. Now he didn't know me, but you know sometimes I push people's buttons just because I I self-disclose that I have invisible disability and I expect accommodation and in that university I was getting accommodations and maybe he didn't like that or maybe he didn't like my work but it was a big learning experience and I, I have to admit that it took I, I, I took it as a blow <laughs> but I got a lot stronger after that mm -hmm. And my artist ego was a lot more solid and ready and able to handle person, people's personal opinions. And I already knew from years past that I had deeply touched piece, people with my work already because they'd written it in, in um, you know, the books. What do you call that book you have at the yeah. opening? Yeah. Yeah. The guest book or the comment yeah. book. Yeah. Yeah. I had already received comments that were really moving that the governor general of Canada at the time had lauded my work, Adrian Clarkson. I mean, she was an arts person. Mm -hmm. So it helped me when I got that kind of critique because I'd already received some, you know, acclim you know, validation and approbation from people who I respected a lot more. Right. So maybe it has to do sometimes with where is that critique coming from and who is it coming from, right? Yeah, good point. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and if they're not your customer, I mean, whereas nowadays we understand that art is, um, um, we all have different customers, we all have different statements or different aims, objectives. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And, and who is anybody to say your art sucks? Yeah. Like... Who are they to decide that his art kind of sucked too, <laughs> from my opinion. <laughs> wow. Well, screw him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think honestly, that is very important for artists to get under their belt. Oh yeah. Is, yeah. Screw you. Yeah. This is my vision. Seriously. This is the way I'm going to express it. And if you don't want to look at it, don't. Then don't look at it. Yeah. I don't yeah. need your approval. Exactly. Really. It's Come it's back. not the art on on your milk carton, so <clears throat> shut up. Yeah. It always strikes me how few questions people will ask. <laughs> like like, you know, if, if somebody sees something that they either like or they don't like, ask a question instead of just making a statement about I it. Know. Won't that further a conversation? You'll get to know each other better. There's all yeah. kinds of ways to go about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking well, of that's questions, the beauty of yeah. art. <laughs> Speaking of questions, if if I may, sorry, I'm just kind of butting in here, but the worst thing that someone said to me, now I'm, you know, much newer at this than all of you are. <laughs> I had posted someone and someone messaged me and said, Is that a work in progress? <laughs> <laughs> but I just like, oh shit. So I was like, oh yes. I didn't know what to say, right? Because I'm like, oh, I see what I see why she's saying that. And so I went and I, I corrected it because it had to do with like a turtleneck or something. And it really did look like a work in progress. Anyway. And she was another artist. She was she was it was it was fine. 
and I, my feelings weren't hurt because I don't know. At this age, I don't really care. Like, sorry, Nick. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, but you it's had important. declared your piece finished before. Well, I hadn't declared it. I just said, I you know, I just sort of gave the title. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess so. The title of the you thought it was finished. <laughs> I thought it was finished. <laughs> How did how did the work progress after you touched it after this person said this? Oh, much better. I removed the turtleneck and I made her naked. <laughs> <laughs> like just, you know, exposed clavicles. And I'm looking at her right now and just up to here kind of thing. Look, yeah, now she doesn't look so much like a work in progress. She got undressed. Well, in that <laughs> case, then it was a helpful critique. It was. It really was, actually. And you know what? And that is the worst because I'm new at this, right? And I think, I think most most of us, I think, well, I anyway, am mostly most of my followers on Instagram are artists, right? Because and I follow tons of artists as, as well. And I think artists are just, they're kind of nicer to other artists than maybe non artists. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, but this is, this most is my know how it feels. Yes, yes. that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you also studied graphic design, didn't you? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. And you've worked in the field for many years. So you've, yeah. you've, people have said different things about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't even remember. I can't even count on my two hands how many, like, especially at the beginning, right? It's, oh, uh, on it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I just, and I was all like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll correct it. I'll correct it. And now I just be like. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's my vision. That's right. Yeah. You say, you say that it's almost like, well, it's my painting. You do your painting the way you want to do your painting. Yeah. 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 Does it come in pink? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 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 that about, your, about your lily pond? Does it come in pink? <laughs> Well, oh, that was the other one that I got. I forgot about that one. I had a, a fellow artist say, do you always have to paint in red? <laughs> I was into ochre at the time, but there you go. <laughs> what this is my ochre period, so. It was my ochre period. <laughs> <laughs> well, between, it's not between... red, it's ochre. Between between Denise and Laura, you guys went to really prestigious schools, which had, you know, really uh, uh, rigorous. I think might be the right word, rigorous training. And um, Denise, you trained as an illustrator at first, which has really a different kind of a process. Uh, you know, for commercial things, it involves clients and checking, and are they meeting their goals? And um, how did you? briefs <laughs> but now you're doing your own thing yes and um and you're succeeding enough <laughs> well i have to say that my uh my worst thing it's actually two things and then both of them do not come from art school ah um the one of the worst things um somebody what, what happens frequently actually that this is the first one and it still happens it's when i do shows and people will obviously it, it will be one of the big shows and people will be wandering by and 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 the people that don't come into your booth you i i more than once will hear them say oh that's just a print mm -hmm. <laughs> and if without you would know asking? not without even asking they'll just walk by and i know that those are not the people who are going to be convinced and will buy my work anyway. So I know I have to let it go, but it touches me so deeply because I, I freaking spend so many hours yeah. creating these. It takes a lot of Maybe time. Next show, yes. you need to have a little poster saying, no, it's not a print. I have a no video print. running that yeah. shows They're me They're not going to spend enough time to watch your video. I know. Put a poster. No, it's not a print. It's not a print. <laughs> And the other thing was, um, I was talking to these people. It was in 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 um, in Japan, 
and I was sort of like schmoozing with all the, the wives and it's it's par partially because I'm an, an expat wife and we are uh, known to just um, go for lunches and do the shopping and all that, and those golf. kinds of things, you know? <laughs> um, so not many of them actually have a job and I do. <laughs> And I consider this to be my job. I, I work from eight in the morning till like six or seven at night. And I do that every yeah. single day unless it's the weekend. So I was telling somebody about what I do and, and that I had, I had like a show coming up or something. And she was like, oh, good for you. <laughs> like it was some kind of a hobby or something. Hobby. Yeah. I hate, and I, that's like, Oh my God, I hate that so much because this is a freaking job. Like the other day, yeah. my friend, I was talking to her and I was saying something about that I was busy because I have a show coming up and, uh, and she's like, oh, it's almost like it's a job. I'm like, it it's is a fucking job. <laughs> this is my it's freaking job. job. It's a discipline. Yes. It's a discipline. It's a passion. It goes past being a job. Yes. If we told you not to do it, you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> I would still do it. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, what about you? Uh, about, about me, uh, the worst uh, thing was told to me to my ex-husband uh, many years ago. And it was just something that really touched me because uh, uh, in that period I was painting the series um, uh, that was more intimate uh, and uh, with um, uh, while I was screaming I was um, it was more uh, more deep and, uh, and once I remember that uh, talking about my my painting he said oh they are disgusting and what? yeah uh, it was very harmful um, because um, to be honest, I don't think that they were disgusting, and but probably he, he was seeing something that he wouldn't uh, triggered because he said, yeah, yeah. In, for example, in that period, he said, "Ah, oh, you have to paint because I painted some portrait of my kids, and obviously my kids were mm -hmm. light uh, and with a joyful color." And he said, "Well, you have to paint something like this, not." this stuff uh, and, and also he treat my painting like a uh, hobby also now uh, like uh, if i'm but i can understand that he, he cannot understand uh, my our perspective of, of what you need mm. to do mm. you need to mm. Mm. however this That's this tough. world was very very <laughs> possible was my my husband and uh, the person that saw how many uh, because in that um, in that moment I was dealing with my three kids we were living in Spain so I was the only one I had no help from any any body uh, because he um, he's the pilot so he was always out uh, away yeah flying so and I was on my own so I tried to 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 deal with my my painting and um, yeah and also feel that it wasn't so supportive and so harsh it was, it's something yeah. that also now uh, Jeez. good I riddance <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, Damn. <laughs> yeah that, that I, reminds me of, yeah. of be, my, me being told that because I'm a, a addressing endometriosis awareness or I was painting women in hospital gowns or trying to you know address the issues of my life in terms of going to the doctor all the darn time I was told that my paintings were equivalent of painting open vaginas and that was disgusting mm -hmm. I've never painted a vagina in my life I can't even see my <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, like, I'm not going to, like, twist myself into a pretzel. So I was, I was so offended. I couldn't believe that another female artist was telling me that my paintings were offensive. My paintings aren't offensive. I'm just no. raising awareness about endometriosis. And that's a worthwhile cause. 
So yeah, I, I think you're always going to get a spread strange. of people who aren't. Um, you'll get about one in six who really have no idea of art, and then you'll get one in six <laughs> who will just put you. Well, what they're really doing is they're trying to get you under control, so they're just disparaging you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think and some really, people just feel better by putting other people down. Yeah, it's I it's a disparaging right. comment, and there's there's about one in six. Yeah. Yeah. And that, so that, we, that's like a population thing. There's a style of, there's a style. You put them in the bucket. That's what you do. Yeah. Which bucket? bucket. Once you, the bucket we call Hello. it the bucket. Once you sort of work out people with a certain personality style, it's, you know, they're in the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Which one has a bucket? The different personalities. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love yeah. that, Cheryl. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm they, send and they go in the your bucket. bucket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you're not, not in the... No, but there's a certain which is which is that disparaging style, which is that put down. It's a controlling sort of a style, and it's a really interesting. And once you sort of get the knack of it, you can. I think yeah. sometimes it is jealousy as well, because there are some people who immediately, if you say I am an artist, they become raging jealous. And they assume that you're spending your time by the pool, drinking and having a lovely time. Mm -hmm. And they've never met an artist and they have no idea the amount of discipline required to be an actual working artist. I mean, it's one thing to have to get up and go to work because somebody is checking whether you're there on time. And that's the only way you get your salary. But we don't do that. We have to answer to ourselves and we have to get up and go and start doing it. Like Denise says, oh, it's time to get up and go to bloody work. (laughs) And there's nobody holding us accountable except ourselves. And that's called self-discipline. And artists are really good at that. And people who've never explored the world of creating anything have no understanding of it. And I often have, I mean, just... Two months ago, I had somebody say, oh, you know, this would be a great place for you to make your art. And it was like the corner of the living room. (laughs) No, no, that's for a hobby artist. Yeah. And that's not what I am. No, you need a whole living room like me. Yeah. (laughs) Friggin' right. (laughs) And then some. (laughs) And then some. (laughs) A whole living room and maybe part of the outer area. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> breaking right it's not a hobby and i don't know if anybody who's you know listening to us or watching us has ever thought of that but if you tell a professional artist oh that's a lovely hobby you have i wish i could i wish i had the time to indulge mm-hmm. myself no i'm sorry we're not indulging ourselves we work really hard i'm on a vacation but i brought <laughs> things to work with right yeah what a show (laughs) wow (laughs) wow i bet we could even go further we'll have to do that another time because stephanie don't you have a box to open and it came from you ross came from me came from me okay so i didn't usually introduce what a palimpsest is and all that at the beginning of our show but i didn't do that today but Stephanie's going to open a work that I started. Now she is going to, which I mailed to her from Los Angeles to Toronto. And then, ooh, look at that big box. And uh, it's a Master Pack Master USA. Pack. Titan, Strong, Titan box. Strong Box. Strong Box. They are amazing, these boxes. Oh, my, I tell you, it was so <gasps> easy to load Oh, the box looks fabulous. And it looks, looks new. Like, I'm doing yoga while I do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, I think, I mean, Sure. Titan comes from the titanium titanium mm. plate. Oh. Right? Yeah, which it, it, it eliminates any piercing. Yes. Yeah. So here's the lovely passport. <coughs> it's a world passport. Not world pass- doesn't belong to any particular country. That goes along with every single work that we're doing. We send the passport in the box with the artwork, and then we write down our process and our uh, thoughts about it and some notes to each other. Wow. This is cool. Wow. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh. I love cool. it. Cool. Wow. Amazing. Is it really cool. Is it graphite? Orientation. 
what's the orientation? It looks like a ladder, but I'm 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 being too literal. I think. I think I'm waiting. Well, yeah, it looks like a ladder. It's here. What is it? Is it graphite? It's in your hands now. It's um, vine and compressed charcoal, graphite, and it's soft pastel. Oh, the I light is the light amazing, Ross. Ross. Yeah, look at this. What? To me, it looks like a skylight. Is it representative of anything? Sorry, what's that, Stephanie? Is it representative of something? Uh, yeah, it's a ladder. Oh, but it, it is. Have to, but, but it doesn't have to be. <laughs> no, I no, mean, yeah, it looks, looks like a skylight to me. Yeah, yeah like when, it could so be anything, right? Like when I worked on it, I also turned it in every single direction, like all the time. Yeah, it depends, yeah. depends on the direction or the perspective. Yeah, yeah. Like, the orientation. Also, can be like a, a, a fence. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like a, or like a pier yeah. looking down from below yeah. a pier. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. <gasps> We're going to do yeah. so oh, many things with this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was that's thinking really, that Stephanie that had a big yeah. job. She's almost got the decision here. What yeah. is it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Yes, Sometimes Stephanie. the number two you, really de determines the it rests direction. On your, it rests on your shoulders, Stephanie. Yeah. Pardon me? It rests on your shoulders, all these decisions, Stephanie. I know, I know. I know. Ah, the pressure. That's how I felt about Lara's piece. I felt like it could go anywhere yeah. on the second iteration, and I didn't want to just take, I just, I wanted to stay where Lara was, so I did the texture. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's what I ended up doing. Yeah, now it's up to me, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> it's good amazing. Fun. I love the light. This is beautiful, Ross. I love it. it. Can't yeah. wait. Gorgeous. <laughs> Exciting. We're so collectively brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's from all of the support that we give each other is how we how we're getting there, you know? We we I hear your voices in my head when I'm in my, in my studio, when I'm working and, uh, you know, less and less of the old stories and more and more of these wonderful new stories. Oh, I hope nice. it's not a cacophony. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get that with four women in your group. I mean, five, <laughs> five women in your group. Oh, I it's all. I had two Ross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I the love drug, it. The drugs help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I no longer do that. Um, but I think I think we've come to the end of our time today, and I really think this was an amazing idea for a show today. If if you're an art student out there in the world, tune into this show, right? Because this is the show that's. I mean, this was a lot. This was a lot of good stuff today. We know where you're coming from. It would be great to hear your comments on like yes. what's the worst thing that you ever heard in terms of your art being critiqued, criticized rather. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a thick skin. Yeah. And artists typically don't. <laughs> it's an interesting <laughs> phenomena. <laughs> I know, right? We're the most sensitive in the group, but we got to have a thick skin. Got to have a thick skin. <laughs> yes, yeah. we do. Strange, strange thing. But um, come, come join us next week. We're going to have another great discussion, and we might even have some art to show you. And uh, maybe Rose will be staying in Trinidad. I think you're there for a long time now, so we'll probably see you back there next week. Well, it's a working vacation, so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, are you going to put pictures on any of your social media? Your, oh, your yeah. Oh, it's going to start being flooded. Oh, cannot wait. Cannot <laughs> I, saw, wait. I saw two beautiful blue and gold macaws flying oh. through the air when I was at the mall. Oh. I was like, oh, where's my camera? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, They're cool. so big, aren't they? Yeah, fabulous. Do they, I met one on a cycle trip. Oh. And um, she was called Sarah. <laughs> Big, massive big thing wow. these are wild ones yeah this was well in australia we don't have them obviously this was this was bred from eggs or something but anyway mm -hmm. it was it was the un, most unusual thing out in the outback and going into a pub or a hotel and seeing this massive macaw sitting above the bar <laughs> in the wow. hotel and you know you've got all these diggers and all these sort of really rough you know like people who are out there working in the mines and that kind of like no one even taking any notice to this damn big bird sitting up there <laughs> We we have to go to Australia. Yes, <laughs> yes. Let's hold our, our show there, our exhibition. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, my friend got attacked by a shark the other day, last weekend. Oh, my gosh. Oh. She was, sorry. Her canoe, okay, we won't go swimming. Kayaking. <laughs> <laughs> the shark came along, the man in grey suit came along, and he kind of like crunched on the side and tipped her out. And her partner and the other girl, and they were pushing him away with the paddle. Paddles. And so she ended up getting back in, but it was taking on water. She got back to shore. But it's, I don't know, it's about... It's about 12 inches, 30 centimetres, the bite from bite. Wow. And she's saying to me, she's going, she's going oh, I'm, I'm going to have to get that fixed before I go out again. And I'm going, why would you do this? <laughs> Not me. I guess <laughs> artists aren't the only ones who are resilient. <laughs> Gee. Oh, <I'm> crazy. <laughs> and her, th her skin wasn't thick enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, friends, we'll see you. Next week, we'll let's all gather together around our table and, and uh, have, a, have a nice discussion about art. Come on, come on and join us. We're the Palimpsest Project and International Art Alliance. Bye. Bye. Bye.